and the boy would be again lonely in the compartment uh, the girl got up and began to collect her things i wondered if she wore her hair in a bun or if it was plaited or if it hung loose over her shoulders or if it was cut very short now he is getting more and more curious about the hair of this girl again if you look at the personal journal of the ruskin born he has mentioned certain things about uh, the the beautiful hair of the girl named raj for uh, whom he was having a kind of soft feelings while leaving uh, his uh, place and moving to uk when he went to meet this girl the girl was uh, combing her hair and it was a very small in, uh, interaction between which happened which took place between the girl and uh, ruskin born so this incident is getting reflected over here uh, in this story so the boy is getting more curious about the hair of the girl uh the train drew slowly into the station outside uh, there was the shouting of uh, porters and vendors and high pitched female voice near the carriage door which must have belonged to the girl's aunt so he assumes that this uh, the voice of a lady which is coming from the station i mean uh, the platform it must be uh, from the girl's aunt she must be the aunt of this girl goodbye said the girl so while leaving the the girl says goodbye to this young guy and she was standing very close to me so close that the perfume from her hair was tantalizing i wanted to raise my ha- hand and touch her hair but she moved away and only the perfume still lingered where she had stood see uh the story is now moving towards the end and with the fragrance of the hair of this girl the boy is getting you know more and more uh, curious about the beauty of the girl and he wanted to actually touch the hair of the girl but he could not do so because the girl moves on he, she is about to leave and in such a romantic situation it is but natural that a young man would definitely remember some poetic lines and here the ruskin born uh, sorry here ruskin born has taken the reference of thomas moore moore's lines with slight changes in that you may break you may shatter the vase if you will but the sin of the roses sorry the scent of the roses will linger there still there was some confusion in the doorway a man getting into the compartment stammered an apology then the door banged shut and was shut out again see look at the uh, look at this particular line then the door banged shut and the world was shut out again so the world for the boy was shut with the absence of that pretty girl i returned to my berth the guard blew his whistle and we moved off once again i had a game to play and a new fellow traveler a new fellow traveler who just entered into the compartment the girl has already left the train gathered speed the wheels took up their song the carriage groaned and shook i found the window and sat in front of it staring into the daylight that was darkness for me again a remarkable uh, sentence in the story staring into the daylight which was almost a kind of darkness for me this is how he uh, describes the daylight so many things were happening outside the window it could be a fascinating game uh, guessing what went on out there the men who had entered the compartment broke into my reverie see it's a kind of reverie they are dreaming the boy was in the world of imagination in the world of fantasy and all of a sudden the third man enters into the compartment and his reverie uh, gets broken over here you must be disappointed the third fellow uh, i mean the new fellow who enters into the compartment he says you must be disappointed i'm sorry i'm not as attractive a traveling com- uh, as a traveling companion uh, as the one who just left she was an interesting girl i said 
Can you tell me, did she keep her hair long or sh- short? He is still in his fantasy world. And he is still curious about the beauty of hair of that girl. And he asked the very first question about the girl to this new fellow companion. I And he replies, I don't remember, he said, I don't remember, sounding puzzled. It was her eyes I noticed, not her hair. She had beautiful eyes, but they were of no use to her. She was completely blind. Didn't you notice? Now, go back, try to remember that punchline that we discussed earlier. That people who are having good eyesight, they are not able to see most of the things in their surroundings which should be seen ideally, or the way it should be seen ideally. Because they have to take in a lot of other things and Probably that is the reason or that is how they miss the most essential things to take in in their surroundings, from their surroundings. So, the end of the story, the sudden twist in the story at the end, it talks about, it reminds you that punchline again. Because the third character, the the new fellow uh, companion, he says that, didn't you notice, I could not notice the beauty of the hair of the girl, but I could notice one thing, that her eyes were very beautiful, but they were of no use to her because she was completely blind. In the very beginning of the story, the narrator himself talks about himself, that he is completely blind. And even uh, meanwhile in this story, he talks uh, several times the, uh, about his blindness. I mean, his feeling for his blindness is getting reflected many a times during the story, during the conversation with the girl. So this is how the story ends with a sudden twist. Now, if we talk about a uh, few more things about uh, Ruskin Bond and particularly about this uh, story, then let's have a look. He was born in the Gawal Himalayas, sorry, Himalayas and brought up in Dehradun and Shimla. He sailed to England at the age of 17 in October 1951. This is just to recall the story of, uh, the, sorry, the life story of Ruskin Bond. In 1951 October, uh, he went to England to realize his dream of being a published author in English. It was his dream to be a published author, to see his name in uh, printed uh, form. Unable to suffer the alienation and loneliness of the English atmosphere, he returned to the familiar life of Dehradun in 1955 and this is one of the first stories that he wrote after his return. Now let us talk about the authorial self. The disappointments suffered in succession, however, inspired the authorial self in Bond to transfigure his personal experiences into an objective metaphor in keeping with his foremost desire to express myself in language and see my name in print. These are the exact words that he has mentioned in his own journal. Let's have a look on uh, the title of the story, why he has selected the title like The Eyes Are Not Here. Actually, it has been taken from the poem The Hollow Man, which is written by Eliot. The eyes are not here. There are no eyes here. In this valley of dying stars, in this hollow valley, this broken jaw of our lost kingdoms. See, this is how the title relates to these lines taken from Hollow Man, which is written by T.S. Eliot. Let's move ahead with another theory, that is of daydreaming, given by Freud. In his essay, Creative Writers and Daydreaming, Freud explicitly connects different types of fantasy indulged in at different phases of development. The creative writer does the same as the child at play. This is what Freud has said. So, uh, in the similar way, Ruskin Bond is also playing with his own imagination, his own daydreaming, and this is how he writes this story. There is one more thing that we can talk about, and that is with reference to uh, Lacan's uh, psychoanalysis. We are beings who are looked at in the spectacle of the world. So see, this is how we live. We are beings who are looked at in the spectacle of the world. 
and the story is also uh, you know describing the picture of uh, others perceptions on our uh, individual identity this is what lekan says in uh, his work the four fundamental concepts of psychoanalysis these are some more references even the video uh, that we saw the youtube link has already given so this is how story ends this is how our today's talk ends uh, friends ruskin bond has been a very famous name uh, in the literary uh, scene scene particularly in indian english literature he has written many short stories many novels many uh, literary works particularly on uh, children's literature and he has been a very famous name famous author from india uh, originally he is a british person but he is born and brought up in india and he does have a strong connection with india particularly place called masuri in india and even till today he lives with his adopted family in his house at masuri he is having a very strong bonding with india strong bonding with masuri strong uh, we can say uh, memories which are uh, uh, very strongly related to india and indian places and indian characters and uh, life at india uh bond's life story is getting reflected in many of uh, his works and obviously the eyes are not here is not an exception and here also he talks about many hidden references of his own life story and the narrator himself narrates the story in first person point of view the setting of in in the setting of the train compartment uh, the entire story is moving ahead with only three characters uh the young boy young girl and the other third fellow companion who enters into the story into the setting at the end of the story and the story ends with a sudden twist and finally the boy comes to know that the girl was also a blind person from whom he was trying to hide his blindness and even the girl throughout the conversation in the story could not realize could not identify the boy that he was a blind person it's all about a fantasy world of a young man of a young man it was all about uh, the psychoanalysis of youthful age the kind of fantasy the kind of thoughts the kind of uh, romantic uh, thoughts which are, which which do arise uh, in a in the mind of a young boy so this is how story ends this is how our today's talk ends i hope this would uh, help you to understand the story with different uh, dimensions and uh, i hope that it would be uh, it would be something beneficial in your uh, studies i hope you enjoyed the session thank you very much Sandham All Gujarat Integrated Classroom Satellite na madhyam thi jodti kadi etle Sandham